G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. Today, our podcast, like much of our content, is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped are the world leaders in male grooming products and they've recently launched the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer. As you can see, it's got a little light on it to illuminate your nuts as you're shaving them and it's got a 90 minute battery runtime, so you can watch- Is that some skin safe technology I see there? It is, it's ceramic bladed so that you don't cut your nuts as you're shaving and you can do it for up to 90 minutes, so that's like two and a half quarters of a final this final series. What else does Manscaped have in their performance package this season? Well, if you'd like to stay fresh, you can use their reviving crop mop ball wipes. If you'd like a clean start, you can use their crop cleanser, ball cleaner and body wash. I could go for some of that right now. If you're into foot stuff, you can use their foot dusting foot deodorant to make that area smell a bit more pleasant if the smell isn't part of your kink. We're trying very hard to drown out the dog. And after you've done all that and you need a finishing touch, use their refined cologne by Manscaped. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a great gift from your dad, you can get 20% off that product and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using our exclusive code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. You get a great discount, free shipping, and you'd be supporting the channel. Bloody earth. Let's get into the video. Sweet. All right, we'll move on to Collingwood, who are the second last team this year. They finished 17th with a record of 6 and 16 and a percentage of 85.6%. In short, a season from hell for a team that won a final last year. Are there any positives for Collingwood this year? Nothing I can think of except the fact that they would probably paying fair price with their draft pick for Nick Dacos. That's probably a more broader <laughs> positive, but that's certainly not positive for Collingwood specifically. But don't forget they don't have pick two. It's GWS's. I mean, that's what I meant. They got rid of it, but like, oh, okay. if they'd kept the pick, that would have been fair value. Yeah. That's <laughs> sort of what I was meant. Okay, yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. So it would have been good for the league <laughs> if they just took him normally. Yeah. I'd say this is one of the worst individual uh, team seasons out of going, to yeah. be honest, out of, out of anyone this year. Especially adding the off-field context. Yeah, and when you measure it against pre-season expectations. So, again, their fans might be like, oh, okay, so we got some exposure into Trent Bianco, uh, Oliver Henry, uh, Mc- Finley McRae, Bo McCreary. They do have some good kids. Then they did a good job of getting that exposure to those kids. But when you measure it against pre-season expectations, they should never have been a bottom two team this year. Yeah, definitely not. Um, and they've ended up losing their coach. So that's mm. another negative, I would say. Yeah. You can't say it's a positive when you lose your coach, even if you didn't like Nathan Buckley. <laughs> it just shows how bad this year was. Um on the plus side, they did win in Buckley's last game. Yeah. So that's another huge positive out yeah, of this year. Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, Jordan to go into the midfield experiment, mm. I'd say, was probably another. Um, overall success. Overall success, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, right. some monster games. Yeah. The negatives, to sum it up, basically, they won a final last year and fell to 17th. So mm. you can't really say that's anything other than an abject failure. Generally uncompetitive when the 22 they were putting out was mature, mm. particularly early in the season. So their early season form wasn't great either. Um, mm. And they didn't have the young kid excuse. That was sort of... Mm. If I'm not mistaken, that they sort of added those plays in later. Yeah. The injury run was at least comparable, if not better, to the years they were actually decent. So it was just a case of everything fell out the ass this year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're not the only club that did that this year. But um, yeah, as I said, the, co- the fact that the coach didn't last the season uh, is, uh, is telling yeah. on how their season was. Another negative. Even though his bodyguard left the president position. Well, that's another negative as well. Yeah. The Do Better report was this year as well. So yeah. you kind of have to tie that in a little bit. Uh, it wasn't so much an on, on-field failure or anything like that, but uh, it's just the, it's just getting from bad to worse for Collingwood this year. Yeah. Um, and they have no pick two. So the criticism with this is obviously with Dacos, uh, if they match the bid, they'd lose pick two anyway. But what they traded pick two for in effect to GWS was like they 24 more, and 30. Exactly. They so could have got more. In, we, yeah, it's a hindsight game, but... Mm. Ultimately, it wasn't a very good deal. Yeah. They could have waited to the end. They could have still made that deal this year. They could have yeah. kept the pick and made a deal this year before the draft. Mm. Yeah, I think they wanted to invest in last year's draft. So yeah. getting yeah, getting your McRae's and Henry's or whatever they ended yeah. up taking. Reef McInnes. Was yeah, Reef McInnes, well. Caleb Poulter. Caleb Poulter, yeah, yeah, okay. So they did... Oh, yeah, Poulter was another one who was yeah. pretty good this year. Um, yeah, so they got something out of it, but all in all that yeah. they kind of backfired a little bit I, they, yeah. they certainly wouldn't have intended to trade pick two had they known it was going to be pick two yeah so. they could have made some big moves for that for sure teams would have traded up for it buddy yep could have gotten spicy how do you grade them big old f mm. yeah me too i don't think there's any other way actually to i'll go with t it. for troll <laughs> go that harry potter reference yeah i know exactly what you're referring to the owls <laughs> uh, okay, I agree on an F. Uh, draft selections are going to be 33, 39, 41, and 45. 
So four second to third rounders there. Do they move down much or get adjusted once they have to match the bid? Oh uh, yeah, so thirty. I don't know on points off the top of my head, but if they just keep with those picks as they have them at the moment, they'll lose. I don't know two to three of them, maybe three picks for to match big pick one. Maybe all of them. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, not much of a draft hand, but they are going to get day cost. So, um, off season strategy. I think their hands are a little bit tied. Yeah, they can't. I don't do think. Uh, I don't know if anyone's going to be leaving the club. I do understand that they still have some salary cap issues. Mm. Um, so I don't know what effect that will have. For I got optimistic a few days ago when all that Pendlebury stuff came out. I was like sitting there like, oh, Pendles, come to Freo, play a coach. Get it yeah. on, son. I thought that might happen as well. Uh, but then, yeah, Pendles sort of... Um, He's come out and sort of said he wants to stay at Collingwood. But yep. still, other players have come out and said they want to stay at places before and the club sort of... Because it sort of seems like <laughs> Hawthorne made that decision. Pretty much every Hawthorne player to leave in the last five yeah, years. Yeah, it seems like <laughs> Hawthorne made that decision as much as Sam Mitchell did. Uh, yeah, same with Jordan yeah. Lewis as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Um, 